G'day, I'm Brett, and in this video I'm finally replacing my old IPF spotlights with 21st century technology and LED light bar. Now I've had these IPF spotlights on my car pretty much ever since I purchased it. They've been faithfully running for nearly 16 years, and there's a story behind these. I purchased my car and three weeks later I got offered my dream job on Cape York as a park ranger. I had no full driving experience and I only owned this car three weeks. So I went down to the local TJM trying to find some gear. I wasn't very happy with the customer service there, the guys didn't seem to care much about me. I bought a few recovery bits and went across the road to ARB where I met a young fella named Simon Heading and I still remember his name to this day because he had such a big impact on me. I told him where I was going and he's like, okay. He spent a good, good deal of time with me. We run around, got a bunch of kit, and he came to Spotlights. I was gonna purchase some cheaper, you know, just crappier brand lights, but he's like, no, nah, no, nah, you don't want those. I think these ones here are the ones you wanna buy. And it's like, oh, they're a bit more expensive, but not, this is, the, this is quality, this is what you want. So I ended up buying them, and here they are, six, nearly 16 years on. They've Pretty much still good. This one's had a couple of kangaroo strikes, so it's a little bit loose and there's a bit of rust just starting to come through now in the base. But otherwise, very happy. I went through my pile of Defender receipts. This is only about half of what I actually used to have. But I found the original receipt and I purchased them on July 8th, 2006 for $338 which back in the day was for a younger fella was a lot of money, but I think I'd wanted to spend about $200 max, but that extra money has paid off. <laughs> I've got my money's worth basically. So I'm upgrading to hardcore lighting XDD 650 Gen 4. This has a 16,800 lumen output and draws about 10.6 amp. I purchased the Hardcore brand because I've already purchased several of the 10 watt LED floodlights for my truck and I've been very happy with the quality. Only about one out of six was faulty from the factory which I think I got replaced from memory and they've been otherwise really good. So I went with that, it's an Australian owned brand. So now let's go through a quick installation and then when I get a chance I'll do some footage of it out and about and see what it looks like. I've decided to use a manual reset circuit breaker to connect the battery to the relay rather than using a fuse. So for the wiring, here's the positive feed I just ran through from the battery. Here it goes out into the LED light. And here's the original wiring to the switch on my dash. That's the negative, the positive. That causes this solenoid to trip across, which sends power straight through and out. So I bought each one of these separately over time. I've just added to it so they just slot together and it allows all the solenoids to be found in one spot right here. Easy access. This is the new beauty. It fits perfectly in between the rails and it comes with two different fitting kits. So I'm going to use the sliding units underneath so I can position it on the old mounts on the bull bar. The second set of mounts connects to the ends of the light bar. Okay, the moment of truth. I finished running all the wiring through. I've just put the battery back in. Give her a start up and see if it works. Awesome, going. Well, the couple of times I've had to chance to test this new light, I've just been blown away. It's night and day compared to the old ones. It just can't compete against 21st century technology. Now, I had planned to do a comparison to see if having these big discs on the front changed the engine temperature when it was running, but I've had a few overheating issues in my car recently, so I've replaced a bunch of things. So I'm not sure exactly now what the impact is but I did 
on the drive down south have a few overheating issues then I took these off on the side of the highway to help a little and see if that would change anything and it did reduce the temperatures by around two degrees Celsius for a while until it started overheating again so maybe there is some difference between something slim and narrow which allows more airflow through the radiator and these big discs on the front which cause all kinds of eddies and blocking some of the airflow but I've set them up here tonight I'm going to do a quick test across the dam here with the new lights compared to the old so we'll just wait till the darkness comes and we'll do a quick test but otherwise I'm very happy so far with the change in light hopefully these last 16 years or so compared to the old lights the same manual camera settings were used during this comparison. Due to the lens used, you can't see just how wide this LED light bar shines its light from side to side, which is a lot more than the original IPF lights.